Daniel Ricciardo, the seven-time Grand Prix winner, currently the McLaren driver with a CV boasting both Red Bull and Renault. If you follow Formula 1, chances are you like this guy. He brings fun to Formula 1 and perhaps half of the viewers of Drive to Survive stick to the series because of him. He brings entertainment and fun to the sport like no one else. But the question I have today is, is it time for him to retire? I will answer that question right after this intro. If you don't know much about the early part of his career, here is a crash course of his Wikipedia page. Ricciardo, born in 1989 in Perth, Australia, is an Australian racing driver. He started karting at the age of 9. At the age of 16, he joined the Formula Ford series and finished 8th that year. Soon after, he joined the Formula BMW Asian Championship through a scholarship and finished 3rd that season. The following years, he climbed the ranks by participating in several championships, some of them also in Europe. Ricardo got his first taste of a Formula 1 car on Jerez circuit behind the wheels of a Red Bull racing car in December 2009. He made such an impression on Horner that Horner suggested he might replace the then test driver Hartley for the next season. He did make it to be the test driver for the next season, not by replacing Hartley, but by sharing duties with him. The following year, he impressed everyone at Red Bull by being 1.3 seconds faster than Sebastian Vettel, the then world champion, on a single lap around Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi. In 2011, he was named as the reserve driver for Toro Rosso even beating the actual drivers in timesheets a couple of times that year. In June 2011, Red Bull Racing paid HRT to give Ricciardo a seat for all the remaining se races that season. This is to give him enough Grand Prix experience as a future driver for Red Bull. And finally, the British Grand Prix 2011, Ricciardo made his F1 Grand Prix debut. 2012 and 2013, Ricardo served as a driver for Terro Rosso alongside his teammate John Eric Byrne. By 2013, he was consistently beating his teammate in qualifying, and this ensured that when the Red Bull driver Mark Webber retired, Ricardo was the clear choice for the Red Bull team management. But his move to Red Bull also marked the end of the Red Bull domination, with the new regulation not favoring them anymore. The rest, as they say, is history. He served five years in Red Bull as teammate of Sebastian Vettel, Daniel Kvyat, and later Max Verstappen. Mid-2018 season, Renault announced that they would have Ricardo as their driver for the 2019 season on a two-year contract. After the 2020 season, he moved to McLaren, replacing Carlos Sainz, who in turn moved to Ferrari, replacing Sebastian Vettel. Ricardo's prime years were the years he served in Red Bull, as Sebastian Vettel's teammate. But all those years were marked by the Mercedes dominance. But there are definitely several occasions where he showed why he is considered one of the best drivers on the grid. In 2014, he was consistently beating Vettel in races, and he ended the year with a couple of race wins and third in the Drivers' Championship overall. For his performance in 2014, he was awarded the Breakthrough of the Year award. 2015 was a terrible year for Red Bull. As Red Bull slipped far below other competitive teams, Ricardo himself slid down to 8th place. But he consistently outqualified his teammate Kvyat that season. There were many instances from the 2016 and 17 that showed Ricardo brilliance and showed again and again why he deserved that Red Bull seat. 
In 2018, with the arrival of Verstappen, Ricardo was no longer the best Red Bull driver on the grid. Much of the 2018 season was forgettable for Ricardo, with 8 DNFs and probably the only thing worth remembering the victory in Monaco and the story of redemption. 2019 and 2020 saw him in a car that was not good enough to get him into podiums. But he did get podiums a couple of times during that time. But they were never the performances of the Ricardo we knew and loved. For the current season, he has teamed up with Lando Norris in McLaren. As I have said in a previous video, I think he is clearly a number two driver there. Norris even lapped him in one of the races this year. Comparing Ricardo to all of his teammates in Formula 1, he has dominated his teammates in the first half of his career. He was consistently beating the four-time world champion Petal when they were both teammates. But 2018 saw him being comprehensively beaten by Verstappen. But being beaten by Verstappen proves nothing. Pierre Gasly is clearly a talented driver, but he never managed to win against Max. Perez, being the genius he is, has been nowhere near Max, if you exclude the race in Baku this year. But I believe being in the mid-pack for two years in Renault did more bad than good for Ricardo. Alonso said during the press conference before Baku about how the mentality of racing in a midfield car is completely different from racing in a car that is capable of winning races. Once you lose it, it is difficult to gain back. Ricardo may never beat Norris in teammate battles. He may never even get into podiums again. But that does not mean he can't perform well for a second driver and bring in the points to secure P3 for McLaren. But the real question would be, the driver he is, will he settle for this role? If not, will he be planning his next move or would he rather retire? Ricardo is one driver that has been well respected by his fellow drivers in the grid. 2014 saw him many drivers praising Ricardo for his performances and mature behavior on the track, including Alonso, who described him as a very, very smart and respectful driver. Rosberg, in one of his YouTube videos, said that if everyone is on equally good cars, then the three drivers who would do well consistently would be Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen, and Daniel Ricciardo. Ricciardo is perhaps the only driver equally loved by all F1 fans. And for his fans, it is important that he continues and maybe shake off his Renault form by some podiums in 2021. But if consistently finishes out of points and if he is far from his teammate race after race, then I believe perhaps it is time for him to hang his boots. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel if you like to watch similar content and stay tuned to I am Formula for everything Formula 1. Until next time, take care and stay safe.